We knew nothing about this. Tonight, that's the response coming out of the governor's office following shocking new allegations surrounding the passage of Bill Lee's school vouchers bill. Yeah, veteran lawmaker says House Speaker Glenn Cassida tried to buy his vote holding out the potential of a promotion to the rank of general in the Tennessee National Guard. News Channel 5's chief investigative reporter Phil Williams first broke this story. He's now following the latest developments. Phil? Well, News Channel 5 investigates first reached out to the governor's office over the weekend about allegations of a National Guard promotion being offered as an enticement for a lawmaker's vote. Today, we finally got a one sentence statement, quote, no one on our team is aware of a conversation to that effect. As we first reported, Representative John Mark Wendell from Livingston confirmed rumors that House Speaker Glenn Cassida has suggested he could get a promotion from Colonel to General in the National Guard if he voted for the governor's bill. It came after the vote was initially deadlocked and Cassida went looking for the deciding vote. The speaker denies ever promising Wendell anything. Still, House Democrats are calling for the speaker and the governor to come clean about exactly what happened. The governor needs to tell the people, what did he say to representatives that day when his voucher bill uh, had failed on the floor? Speaker Kasten needs to just forthrightly answer the charge. Did he mention a military office to a member in the context of trying to get that member to vote for a bill, or did he not? What now, we've continued to dig into what lawmakers were promised for their vote. We'll have more coming up at 6 and a full in-depth report tonight on News Channel 5 at 10. Rory? Phil, thank you. ICE agents attempted to arrest a father in Hermitage today, but his neighbors stepped in to keep that from happening. News Channel 5's Jesse Knudsen has details on the standoff that lasted for hours. These are a couple of ICE officers. A family was in crisis today after Immigrations and Custom Enforcement agents blocked their driveway, trapping a father and his son in their car. The father is reportedly in the U.S. illegally, and the ICE agents had an administrative warrant for his arrest. But because it wasn't a judicial warrant, they couldn't physically remove him from his car. So he sat in his car with his son until help arrived in the form of his neighbors. They're good people. Real good people. I've been doing them for 14 years. Realizing what was happening, neighbors not only came by to support, but made sure their neighbors were comfortable while they waited out the ICE agents. We made sure they had water, they had food, we put gas back in the vehicle when they were getting low, just to make sure that they're okay. And slowly more people came, including Metro Police to keep the peace, council members to evaluate the situation, and lawyers to hold the ICE agents accountable. They bully, they intimidate, they misadvise on the law. They're allowed to do that, but it doesn't make it right. Eventually, the ICE agents gave up and left, and the neighbors made sure the father and son safely made it inside to their family. We formed a chain, and they ran in the house safe and sound. And after gathering some of their belongings, they left their home once again with the help of their neighbors in search of a safer place for the time being. Now, since the family left, it's unclear whether they will ever come back to this home, but their neighbors say if they do come back and ICE comes back, the neighbors will once again come together to support this family. In Nashville, Jesse Knudsen, News Channel 5. City leaders, including Mayor Briley, are sounding off about the incident. We have that reaction right now on NewsChannel5.com. New at 5, privacy issues at early voting sites. Our own Phil Williams raised concerns that Davidson County's new way of voting lets election workers see how you voted. News Channel 5's Kyle Horan looked into us, uh, looked into this for us today. And Kyle, the Election Commission is now taking steps to make sure everyone's vote stays private. Yeah, that's right. There's actually a new system, just like you said. And this is what one of the ballots will look like after you vote. This is just a sample ballot. There's none of the real answers on here, but what was happening is people were a little confused. This gets printed off and then you feed it into a scanning machine, right? And then that scanning machine counts that vote. But what was happening is people didn't know how to put it in. And so some election officials would come over and help them feed it in. But if it was facing up like this, all of those votes, well, they'd be visible for anyone to see. And that raised some questions. People on Twitter sounding off about what the security was like. However, election administrator Jeff Roberts said all of the poll workers have received some updated training and instead of standing near the scanning machines, election officials will now stay back and give verbal commands if someone needs help. And there are signs on all the scanners that tell the voter to feed the ballot into the machine face down. Despite that controversy over the weekend, Roberts says this is way of a this way of voting is still more secure. Before you were making your choices on 
the actual voting machine, and that was it. You didn't have an opportunity to review to make sure those were your actual choices. Here you're getting a voter verified paper trail. You're actually able to look at your ballot and say, yes, these are my choices. And right now there are 120 early voting poll workers out here. They've all been told what to do, but there's going to be many more come August 1st once the full election happens. They will have to be trained on that as well. Reporting live, Kyle Horan, News Channel 5. All right, Kyle, thank you. Tonight we're learning new information about the young suspects in a crime that shocked everyone. Months after a musician was shot and killed at his West Nashville home, the teenagers accused of his death appeared in court. News Channel 5's Matthew Torres was at the courthouse as their attorneys fought to get them out on bond today. Matthew. And Rory, keep in mind, because of their ages, our cameras were not allowed in the courtroom. Attorneys for three of the five teen suspects argued their clients should be released out on bond, but under strict guidelines. But the state says not so fast, using new information we learned from the juvenile detention center where the defendants are being held. Of the three defendants, one name was publicly released by Metro Police. That's 16-year-old DeCorius Wright. He's accused of helping plan a robbery with four other kids and firing the shot that killed musician Kyle Yorlitz at his West Nashville home in February. Wright's family and friends were in the courtroom as the prosecutor showed video from outside of his cell. The center's director testified that Wright was one of several boys who surrounded a staff member and intimidated him into handing over the key fob. Meanwhile, his 13 year old co-defendant could be seen pretending to punch that same staff member and going behind him and taking the radio and smashing it into the ground. They're accused of trying to escape the facility after using the key fob to enter a different section to attack another inmate. Now combined, the two defendants had 75 disciplinary reports against them since they were admitted in February from gang fights to assaulting staff and failing to follow directions to having contraband. The state says their behavior alone in custody should be of concern to the community. The judge will decide what to do about their bonds later on. Carrie. Matthew, thank you. A neighborhood shaken by a shocking crime. An elderly woman murdered inside her own home. Why? Why her? I mean, we're just, we're, this is just a simple community. We have the latest on this case straight ahead. And these crooks probably weren't expecting to be seen crystal clear on surveillance camera. Now police just need your help identifying them. Flash flooding plaguing that Monday commute, but it's not all bad news. I'll let you know what the silver lining is next. News Channel 5 at 5. Join the conversation. Connect with News Channel 5 on Facebook. A neighborhood on edge after a woman is killed inside her home. And now a community is wondering if the killer is still on the loose. News Channel 5's Chris Conti is in Ashland City with the latest this evening. In the way of clues, we know very little about what happened to this elderly woman inside of her home here. We do know that she lived alone and neighbors say this whole thing has shaken them. Obviously something bad happened. I mean, or else it, it wouldn't be so tight lipped and but not knowing exactly what happened, but just surmising, you know, you, you want justice, you want justice, you know, you don't want those people running around. I don't want them running around here if they are running around here. That is Brian Carroll. He lives a few doors down from where that elderly woman was found dead inside her home yesterday. Like most of his neighbors here today, he was hoping authorities might release some kind of new information about the crime. For the second day in a row, investigators from the TBI were scouring the home on Valley View Road in Ashland City. It was just after 3 in the morning on Sunday when that elderly woman was discovered. We're told she lived by herself. The Cheatham County Sheriff's Office says they are working hard to find her killer, but her name has not been released, all as this neighborhood remains on edge. Chris Conti, News Channel 5. Thank you, Chris. A group appears to be hitting Best Buy stores in the southeast and they've made their way here to Middle Tennessee. Sunday morning, burglars broke into the Best Buy in Murfreesboro and the one in Brentwood. Police tell us multiple people were involved and their focus was Apple products. Brentwood police say they made off with some 50 iPads. A couple of crooks caught on camera. This is video of them breaking through the front door of the Leapers Fork Market on Thursday morning. It happened about 430. They broke the glass with what appears to be a crowbar. They grabbed the cash drawer and then they just took off. If you recognize them, give the Williamson County Sheriff's Office a call. A call. And by the way, they drove off in a light colored extended cab pickup. Now take a look at this picture. A lot of rain coming down this afternoon out in White County and it's created this large pond in, in the front yard of this home off Burgess Falls Road. 
once again, this system just dumping buckets. Yes, downright soupy out there. The the efficiency of some of these storm systems, you know, tip of the hat from the meteorologist <laughs> for being an efficient rainmaker. The problem is the ground is soaked, and so yeah. there's nowhere for that water to go, hence the flash flooding that's happening in some spots. It's spotty, and it will get better shortly after sunset tonight. But that doesn't help you in the thick of the evening commute. Uh, Storm 5 Titan out uh, near the Murray County line near the Spring Hill area. Henry, I can hear the rain pounding on top of Storm 5 Titan. Now let us know the latest on where you are. Intense rainfall now. We are on 65 South. We've crossed over into Murray County and uh, I want to go on and show you actually from roof cam. You can see the spray as the vehicles pass us here on 65. We're going south. You look in the northbound lanes, the same thing intense rainfall that is hitting right here for the afternoon rush and that of course is going to remain a bit of a problem switching this over to radar all that yellow that you see is right along parts of 65 while we are just outside of where the flash flood warning is in effect it is still very heavy rain and you should not let your guard down just because it's just outside it. In fact, I'm waiting to see if our friends over at the weather service are going to extend the uh, flash flood warning to include these areas as we're seeing some pretty intense ponding along the roadway out here, Bree. Again, as we travel down 65 South, a view from dash cam, you can see folks now tapping their brakes to slow down as the rain is getting even heavier. And another view as we look above Storm 5 Titan, that gives you a better idea of the spray along the interstate that we're dealing with. Bottom line, the roads are slick. If you're in a dry spot, it won't be dry for long, most likely. But the good news, as you've been saying as well, Bree, this is all with the cold front that's going to bring us some nice relief. We'll continue to keep you updated from out here throughout the News Channel 5 viewing area in Storm 5 Titan. But for now, we're going to send it back inside to you, Bree. Yeah, it's amazing what 24 hours of improvement will bring us. This time tomorrow on your drive home, you will have the window down. The radio up and you probably won't even have the air conditioner on. It's going to feel so good on the back side of the system. The cost is this sloppy Monday night though. Now Henry mentioned the ponding. The other concern, not just underneath one of those thunderstorms, is the runoff, right? Streams and creeks that continue to rise as runoff accumulates. This is rainfall over the last two days and where you see these red bullseyes, that's upwards of four inches that has fallen in just the last couple days. One of the things the National Weather Service calculates is our flash flood guidance. And what that takes into account is how much moisture is in the ground and how much moisture is in the air and how much rain it would take to cause flooding. Our flash flood guidance is in the one and a half to two and a half inch range. When you look at the rainfall rates underneath the heaviest pockets with these systems, it's upwards of 3.75 inches, three and a half inches as you look towards parts of Putnam County, nearly three inches in Rutherford. So easy to see that we've got plenty of moisture out there. These thunderstorms, very efficient rainmakers, and that's aggravating and already soaked ground. We will see some improvement as we head past sunset tonight. The heaviest downpours are along that leading edge, and this will be gone in the next two hours. There is some rain that has filled in on the back side of it. We still have flash flooding ongoing across Trigg, Christian, and Todd counties. This rainfall also deteriorating. It's that runoff. That'll be the biggest threat there for the next hour to an hour and a half. Uh, rainfall starting to wind down across parts of Robertson and Sumner County, the heaviest moving towards areas east. Scattered showers and storms across Bedford, Marshall, parts of Murray County over towards Giles and Lawrence. Again, heavy downpours when it's right on top. But the good news is this is being fueled by a cold front, a rare cold front for this middle part belly of the beast of July. It's 90s to the south and southeast as it's been for most of July and what we expect this time of year. 90 Atlanta, 92 Montgomery, but look to our uh, our neighbors to the northwest. 81 in St. Louis. That's not crisp, but it's better than 90s, even 79 in Kansas City. This is a potent cold front. It's bringing showers and storms all the way from the northeast down to the Lone Star State, but once it clears us, We've got dry skies on the backside. We've got much more comfortable conditions. And I think the best news of all, lower humidity. Everyone gets to dry out. The lawns, of course, reaching back up to the sky then. 66 overnight tonight with skies drying. Most of the rain will be done by midnight. 82 tomorrow. That is not a typo. Top temperature. That means we'll spend most of the day in the 70s. Gorgeous sunset likely tomorrow night too. We'll keep it in the low 80s with the lowest humidity, the lowest muggy gross factor we've had all uh, all so far this month. Temperatures, of course, do creep back up as we head towards the weekend. It is still July, summer, heat, humidity. It'll creep back in. Doesn't look like that happens though, Carrie, until Saturday.
Okay, thank you, Bree. Millions of people have become victims of identity theft. Yeah, even people who work hard to safeguard their personal information. Identity theft is upsetting to all of us, so it can be a whole mess. If you're looking for protection, is an ID theft protection service the answer? Consumer Reports has a look next. Well, we now know how Equifax will try to make amends for the 2017 data breach that exposed the private information of millions of people. Equifax will pay out up to $700 million. Part of that will go right to states, part to customers. Tennessee's haul, about $3.5 million. The FTC says impacted consumers are eligible to try to claim as much as $20,000. They're also eligible for free credit monitoring for up to 10 years and at least seven 